Greetings Internet, this is Ninark and welcome back to my Zelda-like tutorial. Today we're going to be going over attacks. Um, so yeah, this is going to be kind of a lot, so try hard to follow through and I might ramble a bit. I just want to make sure you guys know what you're doing so that maybe you could uh, adjust it to work for your own needs. Um, so, right, so what we're going to be doing is uh, when our character presses whatever our attack button is, he's going to spawn a sword that sword will do a little swipe animation and then it will destroy itself and then you will be able to move again. Um, that's how I'm setting it up here, uh, similar to uh, A Link to the Past. However, um, in A Link to the Past you could spam the attack button as many times as you wanted and it would, it would uh, move as fast as you could press the button. We're going to be doing it so that you have to actually finish your attack animation in order to attack again. Uh, anyway, let's get started. So let's go to our layouts actually and add a new layout. Don't add an event sheet and we're going to call this layout objects. Uh, the reason for this is because Construct 2 needs an object to exist in uh, the space in order for it to exist in the game. It can't just exist in your object type folder. So it's good practice to have an objects layout and uh, just make sure your character never can actually or your player can never actually access it. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, christen this layout with a new object, a sprite, we're going to press it down, and then uh, I have some swords already made, I'll put them up on my itch for you to download, um, but uh, you can make them however you want, um, as long as they're a similar size and a similar style. Um, it, that's kind of the beauty of the way we're going to be doing things today. So anyway, so here's our sword. Uh, now the first thing we want to do is rotate it to the right so that it's at zero degrees. Um, that's pretty important because uh, that's the direction that our sword is going to start moving. Um, so we'll leave it there and then we also want to go over to image points here. If, you, if this isn't showing up, click on the image points little button over here. Uh, if you press it again it goes away but make sure that it comes up. Right click, go to quick assign and go to left and that will put it at the very bottom. So the reason we're doing this is because we want our character to be about right here and for the sword to go around him and not kind of inside of him. Um, and you can adjust uh, the size of this and things like that uh, as you please, but uh, let's get this working so that you can actually see what it is that we're doing. So uh, let's close our, so once we have that, let's close our objects tab just so we don't accidentally run layout because that would just be annoying. Um, so yeah, I think we need to do one more thing. We want to click on our character, not our direction. Make sure you click on our character. Um, and go to instance variables. We're going to add a new variable and let's call this is underscore ATK for attack. You can call it A-T-T-A-C-K. You can spell it if you want. Spelling is not my strong suit as you just were aware. Uh, we're going to make this false because he is not attacking by default. Um, and yeah, so that's all we really need uh, on the front end, let's start working on the back end. So let's go to our event sheet and we're going to add a group and we're going to call this attack. All right, cool. Uh, so we want to make it so that when you press a button, obviously he begins his attack animation. So let's add a sub event and let's go to miscellaneous, go to our keyboard on key pressed. And we're going to click to choose, and I'm just going to use spacebar. Um, you can use whatever key you want, Q or E or Z, or it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever you want it to be, make it that. So press OK and press Done. And then we also want to add a, uh, a what's the word? A gamepad. Yeah, <laughs> a gamepad event as well. But you'll see if you add another condition and go to miscellaneous and click on gamepad, we don't have is button pressed. And we really want that because that's what we want. Uh, so in order to make that show up, click on the side over here, make sure you have the whole event selected, and go to make or block. Uh, that will make it so that if space is pressed or a button on our, on our uh, gamepad is pressed as well, our event will happen. So now we can go to add another condition, go to miscellaneous, go to our gamepad, and you'll see that on button pressed is right there ready for us. So click on that, leave it at gamepad 0, and we're going to go with button A, I guess, that's fine. Um, cool. So if we're space pressed or our gamepad button A is pressed, then things will happen. Now, uh, I forgot we have to do actually one more thing. Go to your layout and click on your direction. 
and we're going to turn off default controls. We're kind of done with default controls. If you really want uh, our character to move with the arrow keys instead of WASD, you can set that up by putting our movement key and adding another condition, going to miscellaneous keyboard, on key pressed, and then selecting a button. Um, but we're not going to be doing that, so forget that. Uh, we're just going to be using WASD and our gamepad. So now that we've turned off default controls, you'll notice that if we play, our character no longer animates. And this is because our direction is no longer reading the eight direction uh, uh, simulation like it was before when we had default controls on. Um, so we need to make sure that we add that. So you can go to movement, select the top one, control C, control V, and we're going to actually do something cool in Construct. Uh, if you right click and replace object, you can go to your player and click on direction and it will leave simulate direction pressing left, but it will change the object that it affects to be your direction, which is a really cool feature and I use it a lot. And uh, you probably will too because it saves a good amount of time. So make sure that you're uh, correctly corresponding your directions uh, the same as your player and make sure that you're always replacing object to our direction so that it all works nicely. So right click on here, replace object, and we're going to go to our direction. And now you can see that if we go back to our game, our character moves around just fine. So he stops and everything is back to normal. So that's what we want. Um, so actually, now remember the way we're making this work is that when you press space, we want our character to stop moving and do his sword animation and then resume movement after his sword animation is done. So we're going to be using our boolean that we set up on our character and we're going to put our movement and animation inside of that. So let's add an event uh, outside of anything. Go to our player and go down to is boolean instance variable set and click on is attack. It's our only boolean because it's the only thing that our character has and we want to invert this. So what that does is uh, if our character is not attacking, that's what that X does. Um, so we want to actually move our movement. We don't want to do that. We want to move our movement into into our uh, is not attacking uh, event here. And we also want to make our animation in the same way. Now, don't put it inside the movement. As you can see, this little arrow right here indicates that you're putting it inside of the movement. We want it to be in as well. Uh, so, you know, make sure it looks like this. Um, and we can move that back to the top and that's fine. So like I was saying, our animation and our rotation will not uh, be affected if we are attacking. Um, so in order to make our is attack to be working, we need to go to our keyboard and our gamepad and we want to add an action. We're going to go to player and we're going to go to kill our player name and we're going to set boolean is attack to true. Cool. Okay. So this is still not all of what we have to do. And uh, again, this will be interesting uh, once we get through it all. Um, so just bear with me. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be kind of a trick. Now, I forgot to do a couple things, so let's solve those problems now. Let's go to our object type uh, over here in the projects window, add a new subfolder. Let's call this weapons, weapons, weapons and add our sprite into weapons and we're going to rename this sword and we all click on our sword over here and we need to add a behavior that I forgot uh, so we're gonna go to add edit behaviors add a behavior go down to rotate and uh, just the way that I'm doing this um, I want it to go counterclockwise and uh, I want it to go kinda fast so I'm going to go to negative and negative uh, speed is counterclockwise in rotate and I want to make it 360 because um, that's you know as fast as I want it to be now if you wanted to go the other way or if you wanted to be faster um, obviously the other way would be subtracting the minus and faster would be increasing the number here uh, so yeah so that's all I needed to do there I think and uh, yeah so under attack we want to add a new sub event and we're gonna go to player kiln and we're going to go to is boolean set is he attacking so so we have set attack to true and now it is true so we want to go and add an action we're gonna go to player 
and we're going to spawn another object because we want to spawn our sword. So if we spawn another object, click on our object, go to weapons, go to sword, and we want it to be on layer zero. Now we're going to be changing layers later. Um, leave it layer zero for now and we'll come back and fix that later. Uh, image point zero, this is the middle of our character. That's fine, I guess. Um, yeah, that's fine. And press done. Um, now we want to do a couple things. Now if we just spawn the sword, as you'll see in here, as I start the game, it'll spawn the sword and it will just keep doing that over and over again and uh, eventually your computer will crash. Uh, this is for a couple reasons. Um, because this is checking if is attacking every tick. So it's continuously spawning these swords and these spawns are going around. So we want to go to add another condition, go to system, and go to trigger once while true. So now when we play, you'll see that whenever we press space, one sword will spawn and it will spin around us indefinitely. Um, also, we can't move because now we're attacking and we're not telling our character to no longer be uh, attacking after our thing has occurred. So we want to do a few things. I want the sword to not spawn exactly next to him, but actually at an angle here, at a 45 degree angle to be exact, so that when it rotates past, it will, it will do a nice swing. So let's delete that because we're going to be doing this all in code. So we want to go to add action. We want to go to uh, weapon, sword, and we want to go to set angle under here, or under angle. And we want to go to DIR, which is our, our, our uh, spinny angle generator. And we're going to type dot angle. And if you, if you could spell, you would be able to see that all of our... Uh, all of our objects have their own special uh, little variables that go along with it. So you can find out if you where the X is for a direction. You could find out how, how opaque it is. You could find out all kinds of stuff. And you could look around there later when you have time. Uh, we just need angle because that's what we want. So we're going to actually add 45 degrees to our direction angle. So that will give it that nice angle. Uh, there's that nice, uh, you know angle. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So now you'll see that when we look to the right, he, our sword will kind of spawn at that 45 degree angle that we want, depending on where we're facing. So here, as you can see, it spawned over here. Um, but it continues to spin around us indefinitely. So we want to do a couple things, um, some more things, many things. Uh, go to system and we want to wait and we're going to have to play with this a second. Let's try uh, 0 0.25 seconds. That might be the right amount of time. Now, uh, if you've ever used any other kind of programming language or anything, uh, you might have heard of uh, time.delta time. And that just makes sure that no matter how fast your computer is running, everything will react to the same amount of time. Um, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Construct2 handles all that. If you leave wait, 2.5 seconds or 0.25 seconds that's exactly how long it'll wait so uh, yeah so don't worry about that if you don't know what I'm talking about now uh, we want to do one thing to make it kind of a little bit nicer as you can see if we play and our character is facing up our sword goes over us and we don't want that we want our we want the sword to be underneath us if we're facing up because otherwise that makes no sense uh, so actually we want to uh, delete this wait 2.5.025 seconds. We want to do this first. We want to add a sub event, go to uh, player, go to direction, and we want to go to is between angles. And our first angle is going to be 180, which is straight to the left, and our second angle is going to be 359, uh, which is one before 360. Actually, I think you can do 360. Um, I think that should be fine, actually. Uh, so this is checking to see if our if our direction is this angle up here, this uh, this arc. So if it's between that, we want to go to add action, go to our weapon, our sword, go down to set Z order. Z order is uh, the way our uh, objects are layered. So you can move it to the bottom if you want or whatever. But actually, it'll be easier to just move to object and then go to behind our player. 
So this will make sure that it'll spawn our sword and put it right below our player. And then we want to do this again, um, but actually just make this an else. So to actually do this cleaner than I... Forget that. <laughs> just press X um, to give us an else here. And we want to copy our sword, put it here, and we can make this move in front of our player. And that's what we want. Okay, so now we're going to have to duplicate a little bit of code, but it's not too bad. Now we're going to go to system, type in wait, 0 0.25 seconds. And then what we want to do is add an action. We're going to destroy our sword. And then we're also going to go to our player, toggle boolean. Sorry, set boolean. Don't toggle. That will set it from true to false if it's true or from false to true, etc. So we want to set is attack back to false. And that's it. So just take this attack, destroy, and wait. Copy it, put it in the else. And uh, let's see it, how this looks. Um, I don't know if 2.5 seconds, yeah, that seems like an appropriate amount of time. Cool. And as you can see, when he's facing up, the sword is behind him. And when he's facing down, the sword is in front of him. Now, ideally, we'll have some attack animation that goes along with that. Um, and if you want to make your sword move a little faster, because this is kind of a weirdly slow, um, we can adjust the numbers and play with it a bit. But, uh, but yeah, as far as functionality goes, it works like a charm. You know, I don't even know how well charms work, honestly. And I don't know where these people are getting these charms that work. Anyway, um, I think that's all we can cover for today because, um, this is kind of a long video, and uh, I don't want to, you know, throw a bunch of information on you all at once. But um, until then, I will see you all next time, and good luck with your games.